Good day, and welcome to Lesson 23 in our study of Romans. Today we're in chapter 8, and we're going to do verses 5 to 11. So let me read these to you first. The, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds in the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity toward, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of, is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. <clears throat> David Jeremiah, in his study of the book of Romans, classifies this into two different sections. And in essence, what he's saying is that although we, as humans, divide mankind and people along all sort of different categories, whether it be wealth, the rich versus the poor, education, the intellects versus the uneducated, in race, different, uh, different, different colors of different people's skins, upon gender, there's all sorts of ways in which mankind tends to subdivide the human race one from the other. But in Christ's view, according to this book, there are only two divisions that Christ recognizes in people. One is those who are spiritually minded and those who are carnally minded. Those who are so-called saved and those who are unsaved. And this is what he says those who, are, those who are spiritually minded or who walk according to the Spirit, live according to the Spirit, are those who are carnally minded, those who live according to the flesh. And this is the main division that God seems to recognize in people. Those who walk according to fleshly things and those who walk according to spiritual things. So this is the main division which seems to arise. And this is what he's saying in this. <clears throat> He says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That was verse 4. For those who, who, who live according to the flesh set their minds in the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. In Matthew 16.23, Christ refers to people who are in the flesh, and he says, You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, it states this, Their shame, the people's shame, who set their minds on earthly things. For the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for these are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. There's a distinction between those people who are more spiritually minded versus those who are carnally or in the flesh. But he also says in the first seven chapters of this, when he lists the reasons why people are carnally minded or in the flesh, those people, he says, who are under condemnation. He also recognizes that there are people who are now saved who have their difficulties with continued sin and continued problems. And this is what he's addressing here to those people who were more spiritually minded because he says they put their mind on the things of the Spirit if they live according to the Spirit, but their minds on the things of the flesh if they live according to the flesh. For to be carnally minded is death. So this is a second distinction. Not only is there a division between mankind in the form of 
being in the flesh or in the spirit. But there's also a disposition. For those who are live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The disposition of those people who tend to be in the flesh is towards the flesh. The, tend, the, the, the mind of the people who are in the spirit tend to be towards the spirit. That doesn't mean that it's always spiritual or that it's always fleshly for the others. But the tendency, the main bent, the main, sub, the main idea of most of the people's lives is towards something which is spiritual, if you're spiritually minded, or more carnal, if you're walking in the flesh. It says, the only way to have the mind of Christ is to let the Spirit of Christ control your mind. So, this is the idea if you are spiritually minded. It, said, it says in Galatians 5, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. <clears throat> so, if you have a spiritual mind, your bent should be towards things of the Spirit more than towards the things of the flesh. Now, it does not mean that you do not have to live in this world and have to survive in this world. Therefore, there's going to be some things of the flesh which you're always going to be involved with, but the idea is that this is not your bent in life. This is not your objective in life. This is not your main purpose in life is to just to lust after things of the flesh. You are to be more spiritually minded if you are walking in the Spirit. And as a result of this, you have two destinations. You have two divisions. You have two dispositions. You also have two destinations. It says in the first part of the book of Romans, in the first seven chapters actually, that the destination for those who are carnally minded those who are condemned by the law is death. Those who are walking in the Spirit, however, who have accepted Christ and who have followed this mind of Christ, their destination is different. It's, their destination is more of peace and of life. Psalm 4, 8 says, I will both, I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me, make me dwell in safety. In John 14, 27, Christ said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, as I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There's peace when you have more spiritually minded actions and thoughts. John 10.10 10 says, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And John 17 verse 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So there's two destinations. Paul is very clear in the first part of Romans in stating the destination of those who have live under condemnation and those who have not accepted the salvation of Christ and the grace of God. Now he's saying to those who have, he said previously there was no condemnation to those who were in Christ Jesus. Now he's talking about the fact that there is a difference in the destinations as well. Because to be spiritually minded is life and peace, verse 6. But because, of, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. If the person is so carnally minded or so lusting after the flesh, he has no time for God, he has no time for what has been talked off by God. He has no time to listen to God's promises. His mind is continually on what he can obtain in this world. When the Bible says that person is heading towards 
death and don't end destruction. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon often wondered of why some people seem to succeed so much in this world as though they were evil in their thoughts and in their intents. But he also said that their time is coming when judgment will come upon them. And this is, a, this is also what Paul is referring to here. If you are only after things of this earth, if you are only after the lusts of the flesh and of the eyes and of the mind, what you can obtain now, then you are heading towards death. But to be, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And this is what we just said before. Christ said he came to eat so that we might have life more abundantly. In his peace he would leave with us. Peace that the world doesn't understand. The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it, can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The Bible says, without faith you cannot please God. And it says, as is read before in 1 Corinthians, it says, those who set their mind in earthly things is a shame for their for the modern man, the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. If you are so carnally minded or so much in the flesh, you don't understand or can understand the spiritual things. They are foolishness. Nor can you know them because they are spiritually discerned. It takes some degree of walking in the Spirit to understand what the Bible and what God is saying. So it says, you were not, he's talking now to those people who have received Christ, to those spirits, to those uh, saints in the church at Rome who Paul is addressing. You who are not in the flesh but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, if you are truly in the walking with God, and truly have God with you and are not just putting on a show, shall we say, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, if you don't have the spiritual, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, then he, this person, is not Christ's. And if Christ is in you, the body is, if, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead, the physical body may be dead, the physical body may die. The idea that walking in the flesh, that part of you tends to, has been, has been crucified with Christ, that part of you is dead. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. <clears throat> the idea is that there are two divisions. People who walk only after the flesh, who have no, no concern for spiritual things, no concern for the things which God has said or God has promised. And their own, only idea is what they can get now. Spontaneous, instantaneous pleasure, gratification, whatever they can get in this world. They are heading towards destruction because they are still under the condemnation of the law. But if Christ is in you and you are in Christ, even though you may slip and still sin, even though you may still have problems, we all do. Even if this is the case, because you are spiritually minded in the, in, as a whole, because your bent is toward those things of the Spirit, because you are not just carnally minded, you are not just walking in the flesh, you are walking in the Spirit as well. Then it says the Christ who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to you in your mortal bodies through the Spirit who dwells in you. This is the division. If you have the Spirit of God and walk in the Spirit, you are in one side. If you do not have the Spirit and walk only in the flesh, then you're on the other division. This is the only distinction which Christ seems to make, which God seems to make, 
no other distinction that we, or distinguishing features which we may put in our ideas, or which we, we may use, are involved. There are two divisions, those who are with Christ and those who are without. And this is the teaching of this part of Romans. If you are walking only in the flesh, there is condemnation. If you are walking in the Spirit, then Christ who raised, the God who raised Christ from the dead will also raise up your mortal bodies and give you life. This is the teaching of this part of Romans. And we'll get, we'll get on further into chapter 8 in Romans next week. But this is all for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope we'll see you next week. Bye for now.